Oh, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos, isn't it? It's weird. It feels weird. This is the last video I'm going to record in this room. That's mad. Because I'm moving in two days. And <laughs> change is something that we all have to go through in our lives. And some of us are better at it than others are. I, for one, personally think I'm, I'm pretty good at it. Touch wood. But something I've not spoken about much on the channel before is how much I ha have moved in my life. Now, on my fifth birthday, I moved to New Zealand. And you don't remember much from before when you were five. So this is one of my first real memories. And after that point, we didn't stay anywhere for three years or longer. And that's me talking about moving countries. That's not even if you just count a house, you know. I've been moving back and forth constantly. Uh, until when I was, well, just before I turned 13, and uh, we moved into this house now. That was nine years ago. <laughs> Those nine have been pretty crucial years. There have been great memories from there, though. You know, I had my first kiss. I got my dog. I made this channel. I've made dozens, if not hundreds, of friends over this decade. And I have made way... Way too many YouTube videos. <laughs> but with all the good, there is obviously going to be the bad. Especially going from 12 to 22. A lot's going to change. There's a lot of stuff going on up here. And I don't think I've ever really touched on this online before. I've spoken about many things, like the time I got jumped and the video of that went around my entire college. I've spoken about the pain I've gone through when I was cheated on through lots of jokes because that's how I like to deal with things. But what I'm going to talk about today is the hardest to talk about and it's actually the thing that happened first. You see, there was this bench. Just coming from here, I am going to be reading this off a, a script, uh, which I don't think I did last time, uh, just so I can make sure I don't miss anything out. So, when I was 16, I was really struggling with depression. It was my last year of high school, and the stress was really being put on us, like, next level. We were part of that year where they were changing the grades, and it was honestly fucking ridiculous. Even looking back, it's... I've worked jobs over the last five years and none of them have put the stress on like they're putting on a bunch of hormonal teenagers. It's stupid. And like I wouldn't now, back then I had no idea how you're supposed to handle that. I wasn't the nicest guys back then. And around this time I did push a lot of my friends away, making myself feel a lot more isolated and making everything so much worse. Uh, so, with all this, one day I started making a plan. Uh, I wrote notes, I chose a time and a date, and I got everything that I needed uh, so that I could overdose. Being that I still live with my parents, I felt like I had to do this outside of the house. Uh, and I ended up two bottles of wine deep, and I was sat on this bench. My idea was that even if I didn't ingest enough to kill me, I could at least fall into a coma or freeze some hypothermia where nobody would be able to find me. So as this rough looking 16 year old sat on this bench, stinking of cheap booze, this girl came up to me and just asked if I was okay. I had never seen this girl before and I honestly couldn't tell you much about her. She was white, she had brown hair, she was probably like two, three to five years older than me. And she sat down next to me and just talked to me. I told her how I was feeling and what was going on. And she just put her arm around me and told me that everything was going to be okay. And I don't know how long this lasted. It could have been five minutes, but it easily could have been 20 minutes or so. But however long it was, afterwards she stood up and walked off. And at some point I looked up after her, but I couldn't see where she'd went. And it's been five years since then, and I've still 
never seen her since, at least recognised her. That stranger sitting next to me, when I needed it, persuaded me to message my friend, who knew something was wrong, and I told her where I was. She sorted me out and dragged me home. Now, obviously, that's not where this ends. That's just not how depression works. But that is where this story ends. See, the reason I wanted to tell this story isn't to show you how far I've come. It isn't to try and garner up sympathy for internet points. Quite honestly, it's not even for me to get it off my chest like I did with that last video when I was jumped. I'm telling you this story so that I can be that stranger that tells you that it is going to be okay. And to ask you, watching this now, Hello? Whether you've been through hard times or know somebody that struggled and not been able to see the other side. Or even if you're going through something similar right now, I want you to consider being this stranger too. If you see somebody crying on a step, or moping in a corner, or sitting on a bench clearly not in a good place, just think about going up to them, asking if they're alright, or telling them that it's going to be okay. As you could... Because you could tell that person. Because you could be that person that makes them send that message. Or make that phone call. Or make that all-important step in the right direction. Now, I'll hold my hands up and say, I have seen people sleeping in an alley, looking rough and in need of help. Or walking down a street with sunken eyes and a defeated face. And I haven't said anything because I was concerned for my safety. Which is incredibly important. Because, of course, you don't know how some people might act. They could be on drugs, they could be an inch away from a violent fit of rage. <laughs> no one can tell you who will and who won't react like what. That's up to you in each individual scenario. Because I'm sure if we could go up to anybody that looked like they needed help and help them, a lot of us would do it if we knew we would be safe. But there's always a chance that you have to weigh up for yourself. Which is why I asked you all to consider approaching them, and not just to do it. Because they might say they're fine, they might tell you to fuck off, or they might just want to talk to someone. And there you are, being someone. Because it's not about you, it's about them. And that's the really important thing. I don't remember this girl. She could literally be my next door neighbour now. I could literally work, like, down the road from her. She could be of move to Africa. I don't know, and I'm never going to know. But I will always know what she did. She's probably forgotten about it, but it's about being told it's going to be okay, and it's a phrase that gets thrown around a lot. I've gone off script now, but it, it gets thrown around a lot, and it's like, oh, that's not how it works, it doesn't help, but and it, it's not. But sometimes, when you're at your lowest, just a stranger saying that to you it can mean the world. Because they've not got any stakes in it. It's it's really hard to put into words. But to end this, you know, when I was here five years ago, I was the guy that was sat on the bench. And I spent years, years, trying to be anything but that guy sat on the bench again. But we're here now. I'm moving cities. And once again... I am a guy that sat on the bench. Only this time, I'm not the one being told everything's going to be okay. I'm the one promising that it will be okay. Because it will be okay. I don't know how well that script's come across. Um, 
obviously it's a very hard thing to talk about and it is different but I just wanted to put this out there just so it's like Yeah, oh, fuck off, Snapchat. <laughs> it's it's one of those things where it's such a, a small thing, and even watching this, you might be that's such a small and insignificant thing, but a small and insignificant acts of kindness that do make all the difference. And if I never spoke about the story publicly because it was too hard for me, then it wouldn't sit right. Because if even one person watching this feel something from it, or decide that they are going to ask them if they're okay next time they see them, you know, it might just be unconscious in their brain, that's what it's about, it's one tiny thing just for one incredible person oh, but uh yeah, I hope this has come across alright um I'm going to try and not edit it too much. Uh, and I have a really nice video coming out tomorrow that's a lot more upbeat. <laughs> uh, as I'm loading this, I am actually moving in right now. So <laughs> I hope it, um, yeah, I hope this has uh, resonated. And maybe out of like a two birds, one stone, this might help me move on that final bit from this. And rather than wondering who that girl was, all the focus can be on how can I continue to carry that forward. <laughs>